ان الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان استقى الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد Praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created all things from nothing and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored some of his creation over others. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills, he favors them over others. From the days of the week, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored this day. Al-Yawm al-Jum'ah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored this day over the rest of the days and he has preferred it over the rest of the days. In an authentic hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the best day on which the sun has risen is the day of Friday. On this day, Adam was created. On this day, he entered into paradise. And on this day, he was removed from it. From the places of this earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored Makkah, has favored Medina, has favored Bayt al-Maqdis. From the messengers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored some prophets over others. وَلَقَدْ فَضَّلْنَا بَعْضَ النَّبِيِّينَ عَلَى بَعْضِ We have favored some of the prophets over others. So from them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose the final prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He favored him by making him the final messenger. He favored him with the greatest of miracles, this Qur'an. He favored him by, being, by making him the messenger to all of mankind. From the nights of the year, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored Laylat al-Qadr. Laylat al-Qadr khayrun min alfi shahr. Laylat al-Qadr is better than a thousand months of worship. And there is another season, ya ikhwan, which many of us, we don't even realize it, but we are neglecting a golden period. A period which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored its days and made its days better than the rest of the days of the year. These days, in these days, worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is even better than jihad fi sabilillah. Righteous good deeds in this month or in this period, they are better than jihad fi sabilillah. These days are better than the days of Ramadan. These days are better than the last 10 days of Ramadan. What are these days? What is this season, ya ikhwan? It is the first 10 days of the month of Dhul Hijjah. Dhul Hijjah is this month, the final month of the Islamic calendar. It's nearly upon us. It starts, inshaAllah, on Sunday. In these first 10 days, righteous good deeds are more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than any other time of the year. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, there are no days, there are no days in which righteous deeds are more beloved to Allah than these days. There are no days in which righteous good deeds are more beloved to Allah than these days. And then the companions, they asked, O Messenger of Allah, not even jihad fi sabilillah, not even fighting in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are good deeds in this 
period more beloved than jihad fi sabilillah the prophet alayhi salatu salam he said not even jihad fi sabilillah except in the case of a man who goes out with his wealth and himself and he comes back with nothing so even jihad fi sabilillah the righteous good deeds in this month are better than that in these sorry 10 days except for the man who he is martyred in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in these first 10 days which are nearly upon us, ya ikhwan, we need to struggle to do righteous good deeds. We need to struggle in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's correct when we say that the 10 days, they are better than any of the other days of the year. Even the last 10 days of Ramadan. Now somebody might say, how is it that these days are better than the last 10 days of Ramadan, when those last 10 days they contain Laylat al-Qadr. The scholars they have reconciled between these two texts. And they've said that the first 10 days of Ramadan, they are the best days of the year. But the last 10 nights, sorry, the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, they are the best 10 days of the year. But the last 10 nights of Ramadan, they are the best 10 nights of the year. In the Quran, Whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by something, He makes an oath by something, that emphasizes its importance. Allah says in the Quran, وَالْفَجْرِ وَلَيَالٍ عَشْرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes an oath, He says by Fajr, and then He says, and by the ten days, or by the ten nights. And what the scholars have mentioned from the Salaf, what they have said, is that these ten days which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning here, they are the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu an, he records that the Prophet, or he narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, there are no days greater in the sight of Allah and in which righteous deeds are more beloved to him than these days. So during this time, recite a great amount of tahleel, which is to say, la ilaha illallah. Recite a great amount of tahleel, a great amount of taqbeer to say Allahu Akbar, and a great amount of tahmeed, which is to say Alhamdulillah. And it's narrated that Abdullah ibn Umar and Abu Huraira radiallahu anhum, when the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, they would come upon them, they would go out into the marketplaces, and they would stand in the marketplaces, and they would remind the people, say Subhanallah, say Alhamdulillah, say La ilaha illallah. They would remind the people, they would remind the people to say the takbir. They would remind the people to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how they paid attention to these first 10 days, first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. That they would go out and remind the people, O oh people glorify Allah, exalt Allah, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, on the ninth day of Dhul Hijjah is the day of Arafah. This is the day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completed this religion for us. He perfected for us our religion. A Jewish man, he went to Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, And he said, you Muslims, you have an ayah in your book and you read it, which if it was revealed to the Jews, we would have taken this day as a day of celebration. Umar radiallahu an, he said, what is this ayah? What is this thing that we read, which if you Jews had it, you would celebrate this day. He read the ayah to Amir al-Mu'mineen, Al-Yawma Akmaltu Lakum Deenakum. This day I have perfected for you your religion. So the Jewish man was saying, if this was revealed to us in our books, we would have celebrated on this day. And Umar radiallahu an, he says, by Allah, I know where and when this verse was revealed to Allah's Messenger. It was the evening on the day of Arafah, and that was on a Friday. So subhanAllah, in these 10 days, we have so much virtue in these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. In these days, Ya Ikhwan, we should struggle to implement new sunnas. We should struggle to make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should struggle to repent and turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should struggle to do that which is pleasing to Allah. Because the deeds that we do in the days of this first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, they are more beloved to Allah than the first days of any other month or any other part of the year. 
Ya Ikhwan, with regards to the takbir, it's very important that we don't do this in unison. It's not being recorded or reported from any of the Salaf that they would all recite in unison. Even when Abu Bakr and the uh, Abdullah ibn Umar and Abu Hurair radiallahu an, they would go out into the marketplace, the takbir that they would recite, it wasn't done in unison. It wasn't done in unison. Even when we go to the Eid prayer and the Imam, he is reciting the takbirat over the microphone, we shouldn't all be reciting in unison. This is just a reminder for all of us to be doing it individually. It hasn't been reported that this is something that we should be doing in unison. As for some things I want to bring to your attention, some things that we can do now. Some things that we can do to really get the most out of these first 10 days. If you remember and you cast your minds back to when Ramadan was starting, we stood up here and we addressed everybody and we said, this is how we're going to make the most of the month of Ramadan. Because this month is a beloved month to Allah. This month is a special month. This is a special period which Allah has favored over the other seasons, over the other months. Similarly, Ya Ikhwan, we need to make the most of these first 10 days. Struggle and strive in these 10 days the way we did in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. The same way we were happy when the last 10 nights of Ramadan came upon us because we thought this is pleasing to Allah. Perhaps we will catch Laylatul Qadr. The same way, Ya Ikhwan, the Prophet wasallam has told us that good deeds in these first 10 days are extremely beloved to Allah. Extremely beloved to Allah. So let's struggle to do good deeds in these first 10 days. The first thing that we can do is fast. We can fast during this period of Dhul Hijjah. Fasting the first nine days, if possible, of Dhul Hijjah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has said, all of the deeds of the son of Adam are for him, except for fasting, which is for me, and I shall reward him for it. We also know that there are two times when the fasting person, he is pleased. The time when he breaks his fast, when he eats his food, and the time when he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then he is rewarded for that fast. It's narrated by the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he alayhi salatu salam, he would fast the ninth of Dhul Hijjah, the day of Arafah. And it's narrated that he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fasting on the day of Arafah is an expiation for two years. Fasting on the day of Arafah, on the ninth of Dhul Hijjah, it is an expiation for two years worth of minor sins. Two years of sins. Imagine two years, we sin day and we sin night. Whilst we are awake, we are sinning and sinning and sinning. And we can fast on one day. And it is so beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it becomes an expiation for two years. He said fasting on the day of Arafah is an expiation for two years, the year preceding and the year following it. So make sure that we fast on the day of Arafah. So when the people on Hajj, they are, are making the day of Arafah, then we should be fasting on that day. We should be fasting on that day, seeking the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're not able to fast all nine days, then make sure that you fast the day of Arafah. And preferably as well, the Mondays and the Thursdays. This is from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Another thing that we can do is we should offer a sacrifice. We should offer a sacrifice, seeking to come closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, seeking to follow the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, seeking to remember the trials and tribulations of Ibrahim Alayhi Salam when he was tested by Allah and he was told to sacrifice his son. And he heard and he obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we want to offer a sacrifice, then as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when you make this intention to offer a sacrifice, you should not cut your hair or trim your nails until your sacrifice has been offered. And the time to offer the sacrifice is after the Eid prayer. If you do it before the Eid prayer, then you are not going to get that same reward of offering the sacrifice. The Messenger alayhi salatu salam, he said, When you see the new moon of Dhul Hijjah, if any of you wants to offer a sacrifice, then he should stop cutting his hair and his nails until he has offered his sacrifice. 
We can offer the sacrifice until from after the Eid prayer until the 13th of Dhul Hijjah. The Prophet ﷺ, it is narrated that he did not go out on the day of Eid al-Fitr until he had eaten. And he did not eat on the day of, of Al-Adha until he came back and then he would eat from his own sacrifice. We have a point of benefit here, Ya Ikhwan. If you want to sacrifice, it's closer to the Sunnah to sacrifice in your own country. And eat from your sacrifice. Feed your family as well. If you want to earn extra reward and sacrifice in other countries, that is also beneficial as well. In these times, Ya Ikhwan, we need to go back to the Qur'an. We need to turn back to the Qur'an. Make sure during these days, you take some time out and you recite as much of the Qur'an as you possibly can. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Whoever revives an aspect of my sunnah that is forgotten after my death, then he will have a reward equivalent of the people who follow him without detracting in the least from their reward. Now, of course, Ya Ikhwan, the best thing to be doing in these days is to be going on Hajj. But we've probably all missed the opportunity to go on Hajj. But make dua for those people who are on Hajj. Remind those people who are on Hajj some of the things that they should be doing. Perhaps all of us, we know somebody who has gone for Hajj this year. Ring them, speak to them, remind them, make the most of these blessed days. Make the most of this time. Don't waste your time in idle speech. Don't waste your time in sinning or wasting other, uh, other people's time in needless chat. Rather, seek to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us our good deeds in this period of Dhul Hijjah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to really excel in our good deeds in this period. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept the Hajj from all those people who are going. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا لِلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا. We've mentioned that those people going on Hajj, they are doing the the greatest action in this period of Dhul Hijjah. But ya ikhwan, those of us who are not going on Hajj, those of us who are not going on Hajj, we need to take time to reflect on our lives as well. Many people they say, when I go on Hajj, this is when I'm going to change my life. I'm going to change my life when I go on Hajj. I'm going to become more practicing when I go on Hajj. But this isn't necessarily the right way to do it. Whilst they are on Hajj, we too should be remembering the trials of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Look at the struggle that he went through for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at his struggles in implementing and upholding Tawheed. Look at his struggles in closing the door to shirk. Are we upon that path of Ibrahim alayhi salam? Or are we people who go from one day to the next and we don't really have any direction in our lives? So on this blessed period, ya ikhwan, the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, go into reflection mode. Look at your own life. It's narrated from our Shaykh Ibn Baz rahimahullah ta'ala towards the end of his life when he became very, very ill, he wasn't able to go on Hajj. He wasn't able to go on Hajj because of his uh, condition. So he used to sit in the masjid and he just used to cry. He used to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah and he just used to cry. He used to remember his life. He used to remember his sins. He used to remember his condition. We should do the same thing, Ya Ikhwan. Come to the masjid. Take some time out. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take uh, judge yourself, judge your life, judge the way you are going in your life. Is this the, the direction I want to be taking? Many people, we just wait to go on Hajj. But subhanAllah, how many people went on Hajj last year? How many people, they had the intention last year, oh I'll go on Hajj next year. And they didn't live to see these days. So we don't know when we are going to live to see these days. We should also be reflecting on the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Ikhwan, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his life was a constant struggle. A constant struggle to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. In these days of Dhul Hijjah, when we are spill, spilling blood for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
We only sacrifice for Allah Jalla wa'ala. But it's not just about this animal. What are we sacrificing in our day-to-day -day lives? What are we sacrificing of our desires to come closer to Allah? Are we sacrificing anything to implement the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Because ya ikhwan, there's no point praying five times a day in the first ten days of Dhul Hijjah and then on Eid day we go and we start partying or we go and we start disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a time for reflection. This is a time for us to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to end today with the importance of reminding myself and you brothers and sisters of implementing the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Messenger alayhi salam, he told us, he told his companions, take your hajj rights from me. Take your hajj rights from me. Follow the sunnah. What we see the Messenger alayhi salatu salam doing, then we should do that. What the Messenger alayhi salatu salam, he forbade us from, then let's stay away from that. When we look at the world around us, there are people going on hajj, but our Muslim brothers and sisters, they are being slaughtered left, right and center. The lands of the Muslims, our honor is very cheap. Our blood is very cheap. Why ya ikhwan? Because we have turned away from the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The companions radiallahu anhum ajma'een, they were elevated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were given rank, they were given izzah. Why? Because they stuck, stuck and they clung to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is a call for me and for you to reflect. We need to reflect. Where are we going? Where are we going? Are we coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are we turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are we making the most of these days? Because ya ikhwan, wallahi there were people who were with us last year. People who were with us just a few months ago. And now they are not with us here today. So take account of your life. Where am I going? Where am I going? And the beautiful way to do this ya ikhwan is to sit down on these days of Dhul Hijjah. Plan out where do I want to be in a year's time? How do we plan our careers? Five years I want to be here. Ten years I want to be here. Fifteen years I want to be here. Plan out where you want to be in a year's time in terms of your deen. I want to have memorized this much Qur'an. I want to be praying five times a day. I want to be fasting on Mondays and Thursdays. I want to grow my beard. I want to wear hijab, niqab, whatever it is. Plan out your development as a Muslim. And also intend, make firm intention to go on Hajj. Make firm intention today that next year I am going to go on Hajj. Because as the scholars have mentioned, if you make firm intention today to go on Hajj next year, and during this time and that time you die, you will be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to your attention, intention. So if you had firm intention, firm resolve to go on Hajj, don't keep putting it off ya ikhwan. Don't keep putting it off. Make that intention, act that intention. And finally, remind our families and our brothers and our sisters who are on Hajj and elsewhere who are with us, Tawheed is the key. How many people are going on Hajj? And yet subhanAllah, they are associating partners with Allah. They are making dua to others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are trusting and relying and having hope in others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Perhaps they are even sacrificing for others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So remind yourselves and your families and your communities of the importance of this hajj. This is all about tawheed. This is all about sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is all about implementing the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us people of tawheed, people of sunnah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to that which pleases him, to guide us away from shirk and to guide us away from innovation. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi, ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ala ali muhammad, kama sallayta ala ibrahima wa ala ali ibrahima, innaka hamidun majid. اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد
المصير ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وأقيم الصلاة